So we'll start with uh, uh, my very elaborate slideshow. It's a single one. I, I thought about it, but I don't have Windows. Um, so immutability and immutable JS, um, Miguel Sinfono, they, so immutability, that, that's, it's a hard concept, right? So immutable, immutable JS and immutability in any language is kind of hard to understand unless you've actually worked with it. Um, so one of the ways I kind of try to describe it is, have you ever had a situation where you get up in the morning, you're ready to go to work, and you're looking for your keys? And like, where the hell are my keys? I mean, you're looking for them. And then you call your wife or your kid or whatever, and they're like, oh, yeah, dude, I moved it, I moved it, I put them in the bathroom for whatever reason. You just went there. And that, so that, that's actually the concept of a mutable uh, world with, with actual side effects. Right? Something changed. You did something. You were depending on that particular state of the world. You put that key there, and next morning it isn't there. Why, why, why did that change? That's actually really frustrating if you've ever had to deal with that. So it would be really nice if there was a world where, sure, you want to move that key? All right, wife, go ahead and move it. Put it in the bathroom where how many times, whatever you want. But my world is still going to have it there. It's actually what Immutable JS does for you. It makes it makes copies of the world so that people in, in code, I look at code like people. It's kind of freaky because I talk to my functions and the functions don't respond back <laughs> unless they throw exceptions. But So thing is that I, I like my code and, and it, it helps a lot when you have code that you can rely on. You say, I want to I wanna get a, a, my current state of the world. I'm going to process it. And I know that at, at any given point in my world, regardless of whether I'm asynchronous or synchronous, any changes to title my little bubble uh, doesn't affect me, right? So what I'm going to do is, there are a couple of examples I'm going to show here, but I created some pretty common stuff that we kind of do in a, uh, in a in our day-to-day -day JavaScript coding. Created a class called long name, fixing a first name, last name, get the full name out, and say, all right, I'm going to instantiate that with Miguel, long name. I'm the mutable Miguel. Don't be that. Don't be this me. Then you print that out. And uh, you see it at the bottom. It says, I'm immutable Miguel, whatever. Then the next line, it's basically that my world changed by just me assigning this. That this is a very, very sim oversimplified example of what's happening here. You're actually taking action on a, on a variable that is local. Um, imagine if it was actually being passed to you, and then you modify it directly, and you print it out, and then there, you've changed the state of the world. That, that's your state. My name is, I'm immutable Miguel, is not, I am immutable, immutable Miguel changed. That's not my name. In contrast, with, 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 with immutable JS, you have the concept of a record. The record is basically a way to define a prototype, where you're, you, you, you define up front your class. You say, my class is going to have first name and it's going to have a last name. The really cool thing about this approach is that if you actually try to set something in that particular record in this class, it will actually throw an exception saying, hey, dude, what are you talking about? You told me that I'm only going to be getting first name and last names, but you're now you're sending me in, a, I don't know, a prefix or something, whatever it is. So in this case, I'm just going to run this code so you can see what kind of what happens. Um, well, it's, it's down there. So I'll just run it, and you can see the thing hopefully live. Oh, am I connected? Sorry, folks, a little glitch. Oh. Yeah, no, it's the problem is that um, I am not connected to Nutshell. Nutshell friends. Grow, great, thanks, that sounds kind of weird. Cool. This guy here? I will. Let me just move it around. All right, cool. So. This particular case, I define the class, and then I instantiate it, and I say I am, 
I am Miguel Castillo. And then the actual console is displaying full name. And when I try to change that world, it says, error, you cannot change an immutable record. That makes me feel good. That makes me feel like if I put the key there, my wife is not going to go around and change it without me yelling or screaming or perhaps just saying, fine, move it. But there is a communication channel, right? That's important. So in order for us to change that little world, we have to do something called assignment. So what you do is that you replace that world. And uh, you can, well, we'll assign it to a new variable. My new name. So you basically say my name, that merge. It's a little, it's a little weird. I'm not going to deny it. But it's still, still fine. Still better than the alternative of things changing without you knowing. So that is how you actually change stuff in, in Immutable JS. Say, all right, I'm going to assign that to a new world. And those two are never going to be the same. Once you change that world, you're going to have two copies. And I'll talk a little bit in a, about the, difference, um, the different approaches for, um, for data management. Long name. Hopefully that runs. Oh, wait. This guy's still causing problems here. So because that's just the wrong approach, I'm just going to comment it out. Oh, that's full name. Thank you. All right, so that's how you change your world. You have to go through a little extra step to work with this. But that actually works really well in some models where you pass data into a function and the function returns back to you a new world. It returns to you a new state. In this case, I'm just assigning it directly. But if I had to call a function and I say, here's my name, you do whatever you want. And if you're going to change it, I'm going to get a new copy of it. That way I can actually handle both of them and determine what to do with it. But this actually scales really well because you have applications a lot of times. So I'll show a little intricate example that got me in my unit tests. Um, you have sometimes applications that are very unwieldy. You have models and hierarchies of models. Like this is a single level of, of modeling. You have one model and two, two properties. But if you have layers upon layers of modifications that you've got to propagate, uh, your, your world becomes really brittle. I mean, imagine if this was 20 layers deep and I'm passing that world around and somebody just changes it because they didn't know any better. That, that will definitely uh, will not be Miguel anymore. That would suck. So I'm going to show a little, a little example. Uh, see if I can. No. Wait. There she goes. So this is a unit test I wrote. I had written. I have an input. I have an output. I have a function that processes that input and returns back out the output. This was my unit test. I give the function, here's an input. I'm expecting an output. My unit test, what was happening is that when the unit test ran, the actual output was the same as the input, which was really, really strange. This case is passing, so what we'll do is that we'll break it so you can see, right? Simple change. You don't even, uh, where is this guy? Oh, here. This is, this, is really common. this is really common to do. When you take things like flow dash or underscore or whatever other functionality, utility stuff that you do, you use merge left and right. That's how, you, that's how you mutate your state. You use merge, merge all that. But then what happens is that you, your, your test failed. What, what I'm saying is that in this unit test, it took me a while to, to realize this, is that my input was the actual output. That doesn't make any sense. So sometimes that change of world, it's, it has behavior that you don't even understand why it's happening. Afterwards, after a couple of care losses, and uh, you know, I, I found out what the problem was. So all right, we'll go back to Immutable JS. I was just showing a real life example of this biting me uh, pretty hard for a while. So something a little more, more, more explicit is a collection. In a collection, you have I have the same thing, long name, and then I have an array of items, a name of users. And in one function, I just print them out. 
next function I process the users, and next function I, function I print them out again. This process users is basically changing the name. I, I, I don't know that this code is representative of a real world just like this, but you don't know. You don't know if some functionality in some third party tool or some other stuff is gonna change your input. So if I ran this, I have I am mutable Miguel, don't be like this guy, then I have I am mutable Miguel changed. I called a function and my stuff changed. Now if I were to run that with an immutable uh, approach, I create my, own, my same immutable record and I pass in an immutable list. It's a pretty trivial thing and, uh, and um, when I run this thing, I'll just run it again so you don't, get, you don't think that I'm actually tricking you. Um, this thing, first of all, it barks at me. It says, no, you can't change something, dude. You can't just do this. So for me to actually change that world, I have to basically merge. That was something that we had already identified before. Uh, before. So I'm going to say user, that first name. Um, Is that right? Or am I missing? I'm missing one. So that ran. Here's the catch. It did not change my world. I merged the data correctly, but my input, I still have my same input. That, that's actually good. I'm saying my world is this. I'm going to send it down the pipe. I don't care what you do with it, but I know that after that function call happens, I'm still the same guy. There is no reason for me to change that. And for things to work the way you expect them, you would do something like perhaps, um, I don't know, return new, and then you map it, right? And at that point, you're returning a new copy. And you can store that and say, all right, this is new users. And I can print them both out. I wish this thing had IntelliSense, but would make ends meet. So if I were to run this, hopefully it'll work. I'd be embarrassed if it didn't, but whatever. Ah, there you go. So uh, I'll run it again. I like doing the magic tricks multiple times. Let them sink in. So here's something really cool, right? These two things are separate copies. It's actually, it's, it, it, this, go, this whole thing goes back to a lot of functional programming paradigms where get an input and you expect something out and that doesn't have side effects. Side effects is just very, it's, it's a terrible thing because of that. I mean, um, there are other concepts in immutable JS that are really important. I'm gonna just put up the, the actual website up here because in JavaScript when you say array.map, array.x, array.splice, all of those things, every single function that you call will create a new copy. Every single function will create a new array, yet the data in it is mutable. That's a problem based on what we established here. I don't know if you agree or not, but it's a different conversation. So the thing is that immutable JS has, JS has the ability to internally keep track of things that changed and maximize reusability. So if you have a map and you have 20 items and one item changed, 19 of those items are gonna be shared, right? That's really important. It's explained here. And uh, very briefly, I mean, this doesn't go into too much detail about it, but it will go into some other parts. Uh, it also, it's, it, it leverages the concept of iterators really well. So you can actually iterate through data and things like map and reduce, or those are actually writing functions. But when you do, when you chain different, actually no, when you do, you use slow dash or built in reduce or map or whatever, every single call is creating a new array. And, that's actually pretty expensive. So this thing has the ability to chain those, those uh, calls and basically, uh, because with sequence, it's expecting those things to be read only, it knows that it doesn't need to create a new copy. So there, there are a lot of concepts in here that are really, really important for this immutable thing. And uh, please feel free to look through them and uh, I'm done. <laughs>